Hello and welcome back to Grafter Branch Ministry. As always, I'm Scotty Erb, and I would like to start off before we go into this. You already know what I'm getting into by the title. I am, and I, I just want to state very clearly, okay, I am not a prophet. I do not believe that um, there are any more prophets. We have a more sure word of prophecy in the Word of God. Anything outside of what lines up in the Word of God is not from God. Okay? I'll state that very clearly. There are also throughout Scripture different times where there were soothsayers. Uh, people that tried to predict the future and or they would do so but they were doing from a evil spirit a demonic spirit they would i mean the bible talks about having familiar spirits and that you as a christian should not desire to even talk to people that have that um that are dealt uh, that deal with such things now so I am no way, in no way, trying to attempt to or imply any definitives or absolutes or anything that pertains particularly to what's going on in the world today. I am not trying to prophesy anything. I am just looking at scripture. I've had a lot of people, family members and friends that have asked me, is the coronavirus in the Bible or is this spread of an illness mentioned in the Bible does this take place is this prophecy and in my last two studies I've kind of said it, it could be but I don't really think so so if you're trying to say yes you oh he's he's trying to prophesy and say absolutely this is it no I am NOT doing that so to begin with I did a word study to piece together what I'm going to present today. I'm not going to be reading that much scripture. I got a few verses I will go to to reference, give an outline, but I'm more or less presenting what I have found on the topic. Now, the Bible doesn't mention virus. It doesn't mention uh, a viral spread or in particularly Oh, I just touched my face. Not supposed to do that. Uh-oh. Um, but in particular, it doesn't mention any kind of uh, respiratory illness that will spread. So get that out of the way. If that's all you came for, no. No specifics talk about what is going on in the world today. However, like I mentioned in my last two studies I pieced together, in Matthew 24 verse 7 and the same thing the same sequence of events in context and the, at the same time period what's going on written from a different person's perspective in the book of Luke okay Matthew written by Matthew and in the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 11 we have the same thing mentioned how nation will rise up against nation kingdom against kingdom uh, there will be famine and pestilence and then it states all these are the beginning of sorrows and I mentioned in my last study that it could be it could be just a precursor it could be the world setting itself up for what is to come if this were to reoccur and reoccur every growing year so bear that in mind as we delve through this but let's go ahead since I'm doing a word study and define the word pestilence. I have with me uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary. Uh, it has a green backing. Might mess with the green screen here, but uh, if you can see that, okay, Webster's 1828. It's the closest dictionary still in print to the time period that the King James Bible was written. And Yes, I stress that you use a King James Bible. In those two verses that I've already mentioned in Matthew 24, verse 7, and in Luke 21, 11, in other versions of the Bible, it does not say pestilence. There is something that they want to hide from the people. So let's move forward. Okay, pestilence. 
first word referenced is plague, a appropriately so called, but in general sense, any contagious or infectious disease that is epidemic and mortal. So pestilence is a contagious thing that spreads through the mortal bodies and is an epidemic and it can't be slowed down or stopped. Now with that, okay, so we've outlined what pestilence is and I've already said how in our King James Bible, we do not have the word virus or coronavirus or respiratory virus or any derivative version of that outside of the word pestilence. Okay, and the word pestilence is mentioned in 46 verses throughout the entire Bible. Uh, excuse me, 48 verses. There's 46 times that it's mentioned and it's in a bad light. Uh, it's coming from God directly out of his anger. Or there is a pestilence that's going around and people are praying that it doesn't harm them. So bearing that in mind, there's also only two times that the word is mentioned and it's in the same chapter, <laughs> oddly enough, in Psalms. Now, and those two times are in a somewhat good light. You could stretch it and say, yeah, there's about five or six times that it's in a good light, but even then it's allowed by God. Okay, now, if you believe in such things, if you believe in the Bible, you will hear me out throughout this entire study. I also went out of my way and looked up the word plague. Okay, now, there are a lot of plagues, and a plague is not the same as a pestilence, but a pestilence is a plague. So, to reference that, looking at Moses, okay, in the book of Exodus, as Moses is going through and he is establishing the plagues that God would bestow on Egypt okay there are there's the plague of turning the water to blood there's the plague of frogs lice flies livestock pestilence okay boils hail locusts darkness and then the killing of the firstborn throughout the nation of Egypt and that's when they celebrate where the Jews celebrate the Passover because God passed over their house for taking the blood of lambs and putting it on the beams of their doors, their front doors. So plague can be a num numerous different things. It can come from wildlife. It, it, it the, the word pestilence is mentioned here, but it's livestock pestilence at in those plagues that take place. There are also more plagues that take place in the book of Revelations, okay? And that's the only time that the word plague is mentioned in the New Testament, is in the book of Revelations. This is after Jesus has risen again, okay? It's not prior to. Up until Jesus dies, there is no New Testament. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the stories of Jesus. He is preaching and going to the Jews. There are a few occasions that he talks to Gentiles, but he tells them to get under the law. Okay, now when, after he dies, now we know this from Hebrew chapter 9, I can't remember which verse, but it says the, that the power of a testament is of no value until the death of the testator, kind of like your will and testament. You can't go and carry out somebody's will while they still live. So knowing that first, Okay, and there are different divisions in the Word of God. We are not saved the same way throughout the entire Bible, and we're going to get into that because if we were, then you could say and reference that this pestilence, this disease, this virus that's spreading right now, the coronavirus across the whole world, is directly from God out of His anger. And I'm not dis counting that it could be but we don't know for sure we don't know definitively as i stated at the beginning i am not trying to prophesy i am no prophet i'm not attempting or implying any absolutes okay 
Now in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? And the word of truth being scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1, pause as needed. I'm, I'm going to be going a little fast when I reference these verses, but this is more a study presentation of a word study. So I'm going to be talking a lot more than I read scripture, sadly. So, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 states, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of, script, of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost okay and I've had this reference to me in the sense that when you're typing on a computer okay you are typing out what you want the computer to do when you finish a paper or a book or whatever it is that you've typed out a letter you don't say Microsoft Windows is the author of it or this is from Microsoft Windows no you say it's from you you used the tool of the computer just as god used man as the tool to get his word pinned down okay so let's look at where we have the word pestilence in a good light and turn with me to psalms chapter 91. this uh might drag on a little bit longer than i usually intend to go but let's look at it so Psalms chapter 91, we're going to start in verse 1 and read down to verse 7. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. So, right here you have, um, you have King David saying that he trusts in the Lord and he's going to mention the word pestilence so he's trusting in the Lord to keep him safe from right verse 3 surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence the annoying pestilence in other words verse 4 he shall cover thee with his fathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness it's not understood it's just there nor for the destruction that that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee speaking of god and those that are of god now you could take that to an extreme but i would say keep in mind this is old testament okay what did we read at the beginning? 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, knowing what is unto who in context and what is to be applied to us today in the church age. And the church age is also the age of grace. So, I have some things written out. I'm going to go ahead and read before we look at the other scripture that is in the bad light. And a quick little side note on that same topic. So you might say, well, what does the Bible say about the word being sick or sickness or sickly? Keep in mind, being sick isn't the same as a pestilence. People have had the flu and the cold and everything like that, but they've never reacted in such a way saying that, oh, uh, we need to start uh, washing our hands, social distance, panicking the way that they are in the world today right so it is different but the word sick and sickly or sickness okay between those three words are found a hundred and in a hundred and fourteen verses right throughout the entire bible oddly enough 57 in the old testament 57 in the new testament 
uh, backwards for you. Anyways, so just a little anecdotal uh, tidbit, right? But, okay, so the word pestilence is in the King James Bible in 48 verses, and almost always is it mentioned along with famine and the sword. It's a punishment. It's going unto death, and it's something that comes at a very perilous time, right? Now, also, pestilence, plague, virus were always sent by God to punish or get rid of the unbelievers among Israel, the Jews, the people of God, right? And from a few examples, we see it's out of anger, with no desire for them to turn back to God. Now, that's I wrote this out, and as I'm looking over things, not entirely true. So I'm not trying to hide things from you guys. I'm not trying to clean up my study. I'm just presenting it as i I done it and the different things that I've discovered. So it's not always, as we just read in Psalms, God isn't personally sending it, but it's there. And uh, we see King David in the book of Psalms saying, you know, you are my fortress, Lord. Keep me safe. And I know and I trust that you will keep me safe from the pestilence. So bear that in mind. Now, I also wrote out, uh, but no, we are in the dispensation of grace, as I was saying, 2 Timothy 2.15. And there, excuse me, <laughs> uh-oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> and there is no pestilence sent or even mentioned in the doctrine of the church age, dispensation of grace. So after Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, the word pestilence or a pestilence being sent or that there will be a pestilence isn't mentioned at all. We have plague, which is in the book of Revelations, but again, that is a different dis dispensation if you understand rightly dividing the word of truth. The book of Revelations is about the tribulation. And we know that God did not appoint, or he won't pour out his wrath upon the people of God. Right? So, we are going to be raptured out through the catching up of the body, the, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ being joined with her husband, or the gathering of us together, the, the resurrection of the body of Christ from the earth. Save people. The body of Christ is the church. Now, uh, but also, we have a prophecy of the last days. Okay, like I mentioned in Matthew 24, verse 7, and Luke 21, 11. By God, Jesus himself, when he was here in the flesh, that a pestilence playing a part in the beginning of sorrows, probably referring to the tribulation, leading up to the tribulation right before, right at the beginning of, we don't know yet. Okay, we can always look back in hindsight. Hindsight's always 2020, right? So we can look back and see the prophecies then and see how they played out and be like, oh, that was referring to this. We have these other prophecies that still haven't come to pass and people are guessing. There's a lot of guesswork and be cautious of those that try and say, oh, this is absolutely this. When those same guys that are trying to prophesy this or that or say this is gonna come, doomsday is near, how many times have they said such a thing and have been wrong? Once a prophet is proven wrong, they are disproven as a prophet at all. You can't hold to whatever they say. Without further ado, let's look at these few examples. So 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 37, okay, states, If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be caterpillar, or if an enemy besiege them in the land of their city. So any plagues or any war, bad times, right? Of their cities, whatsoever plague, okay? Just as I said, whatsoever plague it is, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands towards this house. Then here, so so really quick, it's saying whatsoever plague is of his heart and in, in his of his own heart. Basically stating, okay, they might pray to me, 
but that plague is coming outwardly to them because of their inward man. Make of that what you will. I, it, to me, it's saying, you know, God knew that they were a wicked person and allowed that sickness to come on to them. Just as we read in the book of Psalms, you, you know, King David is saying, you know, you will keep me safe and I trust that you will keep me safe because I trust in you, God. So verse 39, let's continue. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his own way, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. All the children of men, not just the children of God. Just as I was saying, their inward man is attacked outwardly in their flesh with the pestilence or plagues or whatever because of its representation of what's going on inwardly in their own heart. Verse 40, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Now, the fear of the Lord is what persuades all men. And the fear of the Lord back in the Old Testament was keep the law. You don't keep the law, then you're not right with God. And if you're not right with God, he can pour out his wrath upon you at any time. And you, there, you're not saved in the same sense as you are today in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, you bring your blood sacrifice, right? Through a lamb, a, a dove, goat, whatever have you. And you, you sacrifice that animal. You slit its throat. The priest catches the blood, sacrifices it upon the altar, and you are cleansed of your sins until you sin again. It's a temporary substitute. We have an eternal sin substitute through the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the way of salvation today through the, uh, the dispensation of grace, the church age, right? So once you believe in Jesus Christ, there is no losing your salvation. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God dwelling within you, God in you, you in God, and you are now joined one body. And I can get into a whole spill on this, but basically when a man and woman marry, they no longer are two separate beings, but they become one flesh, right? The same is implied with you once you believe and accept the, the blood atonement of Jesus Christ, you and Christ become one. You are now the body of Christ here on earth. So moving on, Jeremiah chapter 14 okay now here we see it in an even worse light so and that the the first one that i mentioned was kind of a reference towards it's kind of shaky ground yeah it's a good thing if you are right with god but if you are not right with god well what's what's going on right and a lot of people are trying to say oh now's a good time to pray and yes absolutely get right with god right now the body of christ has not left the Holy Spirit of promise, which we are sealed by, hasn't been gathered together. We have not been gathered together and brought unto him in heaven. So there's still time to get saved. But right here, we see a difference. This is Old Testament. Remember, like I said, it's temporary and everything like that. And those that live wickedly and then try and turn to God once he's already pouring out his wrath, it's too late in the Old Testament. Uh, same, I guess you could say, is for today when you're in the time of the tribulation, once the body of Christ has already been gathered together and raptured out of the earth. Uh, yeah, or resurrected out of the earth, as the Bible says it. But um, let's read here. So Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 10. Thus says the Lord unto this people, thus have they loved to wander. They're, they're going off to do uh, other things outside of God himself, not by his ways. They have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. He's remembering their iniquity that they have always done. So I'm just going to continue reading and then we'll look at it going down to verse 14. Again, Jeremiah chapter 14. Pause and follow along. Please open a physical King James Bible. KJV. Go buy one. 
So, uh, verse 11. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for the, this people, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they... So... <laughs> When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering, an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. So Jeremiah was a prophet trying to warn them of Babylon coming and King Nebuchadnezzar and everything. We'll, we'll see that. I'm going to push forward. So verse 13. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you as a as assurance peace in this place. Then then the God said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commended them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you false visions and div divinations, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their hearts. So the prophets that were going around and were trusted, Jeremiah was probably looked at like a wackadoodle, right the the crazy homeless guy that holds up the sign that says get saved now or the end is coming or whatever and people look at it and kind of laugh well that was jeremiah that was a lot of these prophets that were prophesying truth and uh quick little side note this wasn't part of my notes but if you go to second timothy again okay and chapter four uh, verse 1 it says I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so this is what you should do and then it says for the time will come so because you're doing this you, you or the reason why you're doing this is because the time will come, verse 3, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. And we see the same thing happening back here, basically. And... You know, I, I have also noted down Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 1 through 7. Uh, then there's Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 2 through 12. And, uh, you know, right now I'm just going to take the time. I've put together this study, and I would like you to actually open up your Bible. All this time that we are social distancing on order from our states, the government, everything, the stay-at-home order, or advisory, whatever you want to call it. This is a great time to draw close to God. Open up your Bible. And I'm not saying just draw close to Him right now. Uh, you need to stay continually. As we just read in Jeremiah 14, verse 11, Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. You don't want to be that. You don't want to get to the point when the tribulation is coming and be not saved. Bearing in mind, you cannot lose your salvation. If it were possible for you to lose your salvation, it would be impossible to gain it back because Christ would have to come down and be crucified afresh all over again on the cross. That's in Hebrews chapter 6. But, so, I, I encourage you to read the Bible. I encourage you um, to study out what I'm kind of presenting right now. And I use this app that's called uh, My Bible Sword. Okay, now if you type in My Bible Sword or E-Sword in your phone's app, on your computer, you'll, you'll see other variants that are the same. And I highly, highly stress the King James Bible, as I stated at the very beginning of this study, other versions of the Bible remove the word pestilence from 
Jesus' own words, God's own words in Matthew and in the book of Luke. And there's a huge problem with that because now you don't have pestilence or disease, right? A, a viral spread as we defined it, what the word pref, pef, but, 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 the word pestilence is defined as, right? You, if you don't have that, then you don't have that in the beginning of sorrows leading up to the end of days. And well, I've basically just put this study together to, as I stated at the beginning, no coronavirus is not mentioned directly in the Bible, but yes, pestilence is, and pestilence is part of the beginning of sorrows. Could this play in part to that? It could. This could be it, but I hope so. I would love to go back to the Lord today, and right in the middle of doing this video, I get raptured out. We all do. The resurrection of the body of Christ were to happen. That would be such a wonderful, wonderful thing. But uh, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, uh, through this study, I hope that those that have watched and came to this point in the video that they would consider you. They, they would consider themselves and their relationship to you, Father. If they are saved, that they would draw close to you and and remain in that place, Lord, and not fray away. And if they are not saved, Lord, and they don't know how to, Father, that they would seek you out and understand that you shed your blood upon the cross. The, the blood is what matters. It's through the blood that we have forgiveness of sins, Lord, and that they would seek you out, that they would read the book of Revelation, uh, revelations and understand what is coming and read the book of Romans and know how it is that we are saved Lord and get to know you by reading Matthew Mark Luke and John Lord as you were here on the earth what you had said father guide and direct them to you father and in Jesus precious and holy name I pray these things that the suffering of your people will uh, be eased and we might come back and see you soon. Amen. Now, again, if you are wondering and want a very simple answer, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And know that it's by trusting in the blood and believing not in vain not in yourself, anything that you do, you understand, but that it's all done by God for the way of salvation. Guess that's that then. Thank you for watching. Until next time.